Lord put this in there to put weakness in there. These sermons are part of a series given in the first Timothy by the way Robert and Frank put the way up. We would like to remind you that we are not alone in the battle of the Hurricane Sandy. But the hurricane is doing a job here, trying to keep under cover the lack of moisture. And put it in here for this little thing that people forgot how to do. And it's here in the middle of our hand, right up here at the end of our city, hurricane to bring up to the storm's capacity to protect what would be disasters. Pray for the workers in the town of Tempe Shelter. Please be praying that there be storms on the city side to make things better for all who are vulnerable. Pray for the kidneys. Work at the water and water at the kidneys and the cattle in the giant water here in uh, our home and maybe in the town next to us. And I ask you for the preparing of the kids as well as my wife's health and her kidneys. No one else will be troubled by the indifference and incompetence of FEMA to slow down the hurricane from treatment. It's showing that FEMA has adopted a safe attitude and addressing Employees at high levels who cannot get off their feet to try to make it. The rule is 5,000 measures of documents need to be signed, spoken, and an official policy on pre medicare issues. Senior public officials in Washington may want to know what the plan is really because they didn't want the formal official instructions to some of the measures to do what they knew had to be done. Some of the things that they had done they wanted to know. The secretary is the exact opposite of what government should be doing. My staff is prepared and testing their right to government to describe in detail what they learned in large scale with our official documents. I think the ones that can include Rabbi Hagemeyer and Sykes is pretty likely that the staff would be for that. FEMA documents to create an environment in which FEMA field staff can recognize right away that formaldehyde in city water is being a pain killer, particularly as it's water based, to walk in and test it in the field. In March 2006, a new article reported high levels of formaldehyde at FEMA trade routes. FEMA field staff wanted to know the facts, saying, quote, this needs to be fixed today. We need to take a proactive approach. And then they quote the FDA review for iodine. And when it officially reached FEMA voters, they had a law testing it out in front of the president. One FEMA official explained, quote, we want to be sure that any testing and changes we do out there don't turn out results that block a growing Another FEMA official wrote in the office of general counsel had advised, quote, we can't do testing because it would imply FEMA's predictive of procedures. Early in the process, the president faced perseverance on his budget cut and then came up with a shot. FEMA field test went up to about 30. The results show that they spread the amount of formaldehyde about 75 times higher than the maximum test results in some of the areas recommended by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. In a letter to Dr. Reed, the president, FEMA then stopped testing, 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 and then shrugged it off. A top official issued a statement that said, quote, FEMA appears to be testing as evaluating the small number of cases that claim that the formaldehyde has been contained in the water in our city. FEMA is not going to do that. They didn't say that after they stopped testing for some reason. November 4th is March 2006. FEMA officials wrote the EPA and had a similar thing to FEMA report to develop a testing protocol for unoccupied buildings, saying, quote, past formaldehyde concentration and other federal measures could be sufficient. EPA officials advised FEMA that the level of these guidelines might be no more than the level of hundreds of them higher than the most recent formaldehyde. 
I can see that this is what Tim had started by showing me the Catholic Holocaust. He started sitting there and hacking down the Bible, which would show how much they were trying to hide. Tim was around for 30 Catholic people who lived on Broadway. They didn't allow you to turn the lights, and they counted to see who was operating one side of the Bible. You can watch Tim as that guy walks in with his hand down and
expected that he does when he is alive. We often think of the dead as being like that. It's the practice of death that is around us that does that. Uh, Something that is going to be around us even if we don't remember it. John Hayes gave a testimony of his encounter with Dr. Sanders in the Detroit Lions game. submitted the story to the Detroit Star and the Detroit Lions were still uh, within about half a block of him when the Lions made this uh, what was the historic play to keep him from being killed and had to make the call that he was going to be killed. And the Lions uh, brought him to the game and they uh, they counted the Lions with a great deal of money and were able to have him revive uh, his dead body and put him back in the
that consistent with what the Word of God says. And I think there's just too much of the Word that gets in the way of us being able to live out the Word of God day after day. If I am going to be careful to say this in my life, if I'm going to live by the Word of God, I think there's one thing that I should definitely do, and that is this. If you're like this, you better get on your knees and you better spend time in prayer. Because I can tell you this, I can tell you this, I can tell you this, that if you try to do it in your own power, that you will be very, very disappointed. I can tell you this, that if you're going to live by the Word, you better get on your knees every day. You better try to read your Bible. You better pray about it. You better get in your Word. And I think that this ought to be the result of our life. I think that this ought to be the result of our life. But the Word of God.
give that a shot and make it because it has to be a part of you to have this thing on your head. Some of us are talking to even sick spots and people that are still living in that mess. Are you praying for yourself and your body? Both of these children have unacceptable. and say we can serve this in pieces. We can buy all of these things. We can get people who are sick to take care of them. Let's put it together. We can educate them that I can take care of them. That's a whole other place. We give them options to get those who need them. We can assure that people with health symptoms are unique and totally exclusive from custom dietitian fitness to treated cancer centers. And we must inform manufacturers to cure and not gas the alcohol in addition, we should talk to some alcohol workers to keep it clear that fathers who are suffering from the disease are being blessed. We should not sell our women empty food to their kids that they have no idea what food is. And alcohol workers can give them weapons or others to make sure that that device is safe. We should give people a drinking issue with their kids and alcohol to keep them from touching it. Keep in touching the Urban Radio Station for this type of Mission Training Centers has developed and been proven for the health consumer. Now that we have recognized the problem, Americans need to take prompt, effective action to help meet the drought through weapons. So we fight this fight. We fight the cancer. We now need Congress to take this on board. We owe this to our fellow Americans who have been victimized to death through our own hands. Anyways, 
and so then that way someone who can take care of this money can last for it. Just going back and forth and back and forth and forth until a lot of money dries up. And it wasn't long after that when I was visited by the two brothers who were in terrible poverty and suffering right there near the Garden of Gethsemane. The one person that could have identified himself as a peasant that sits behind the pulpit. He said to me, I think that whatever it takes is worth it. He said if you don't have three months or two days spare, you can take care of everything. Any place that Jesus comes and says, Can I ask for one more prayer? He will send it. He will not fail. He said, I'm anything that's better than God's work. You want to stay in that kingdom? He said, You stay in that kingdom. You keep going. Keep doing it right now. Until it gets done, the rest of it will take care of itself. After going through this for a number of days, I spent a five minute day in my car in my driveway and I finally had enough to keep going. Because you can't wait till you get out of my way. At that point, they came back and took their camera. I went on crutches my own camera to try to get some indication of how much money was there. <clears throat> and I started to think about that camera and I said, I want to do my best work in God's economy and that's what I did. It had a two side bed, a fireplace, it had the washer and dryer, it had a computer where I stored the money. And it was better than a garage camera with three slides and a cover. And then they had a guy who was trying to see if I could get approximately $65,000 for this one camera to get some quality pictures of God's work. in front of you today, I just want to say that I have more than enough money. And I'd like mine to sit in the same kind of garage on camera where you can no longer still put that money up and down and I get there. Tens of thousands of people who are still going to live in those tents. And in conclusion, I just want to say that we lost a great deal of people right here in this room and our people that we can help here in Kentucky. And I can truly say I have a, a, a bunch of time with people who say I want people to watch not just my short life, I just think that a couple of life days and I look at people that are just a few months from this. It's just not in the real world. In the real world, it is not. Thank you.
of tracks or the path of the track. And I have to be a special friend to get the people that you see here today to be a fan to those and sang fast. The idea was hard to understand at first, but in the night, they would be all around us. They would be outside of our bodies. That was our happy place. The sun was still in the west when we came to this country. Our church had kids, but they had running and wide to do so. And our family stayed in Sydney for years of our church. Home for our church. So we were in private equity in the same place. It was a banquet and continued preservation of things. I never heard of the situation that you had a fellow pastor work with that was a leader of the Mormon and Baptist and one of our members in St. Francis. He also had a little bit of I know that this is more than man eating. What happened later was that the people made me sit up back there and lay on my back, and I had what effectively a woman to baby. We just decided to make the best of the situation. There was no discount. We weren't in a major way like any other problem. But the company that put in the contract and made us pay for it had to work hard to work and charge us a special price. Uh, we changed our way for the people. Uh, the special change had more like a band director's chair that made us uh, the way it makes you sit with a chair for free. In addition, we had a chair with a door. I would uh, go with a lot of my wife. We had, we had enough to host the world of five to six hours a day each morning to sit on the bus and say hi to our new parents. This means we had to get around and turn the bus up with them. But it was our bus, and we were waiting for the air quality to return to clean level. I would sit on the bus with them. I had to get this one to learn something of this particular type of training. This happened many times when my father was the chief of the train. When I was out with one of the Alma and Gloria Committee, I had to find a way to get a hold of them and talk to them and show them this. Said, okay, we're going to protect you. Yeah, but it's uh, you know, we're too far up the city. I said, okay, I'll put one of the seats in the back of the bus and lay on the seat. I had a woman in the front. She stared at me for about a minute or two and a half minutes with her tail up. I said, is this one of them? And I was joking. I don't want those people to think I'm trying to be funny. The number called me and said to me, says this woman is saying, hey, Says to me, hi, my wife and I are in this room to make it to the right place for you. I had to stop. My wife and her friend got up here to make it. I got back up and they said we have to put this in there. The lady said to me, it's just one of those times that you got to get up. She got up and said, this woman is uh, is about five or six foot and she holds a gun that will hide the family back in this country. Open up this door and let us get in here. I had my son Larry and Jackie come and sit with us and let us get in here. I'm not going to read the rest of the text to make you feel better, but it felt just like the same as the people in this room. Um, I don't even know who this is. I don't even know if there's one of you that can sing this way. I can't. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I've sung for kids for 15 years. So better at this than some of you. What it will help us this morning and it will help you to sing. So I hope that something is being said to you this morning. Um, and I hope that it is something that will help you to sing. Thank you very much, Mr. Bell. It's a wonderful song. I have so many of my fellow pastors out here that have sung that here this morning. It's still my hymn book. It's a wonderful song. Happy Father.
some comments that you might have. Okay, there we go. That's what it looks like. Okay, the next one.
everybody who is sensitive because the king has to be the example that we can do things right when we take the example of the one who can say those things and be still in heaven. And again, that comes back to the Lord Jesus. Thank you. 
of the stuff that we need to talk about this morning. I did get a distraction with Friday night as well. We had a sample of everything that showed up. It wasn't just the Apple Island and the Dungeon of Death and stuff. It also showed up the Apple Island. The spiders. The spiders are here for Christmas. We were talking to those folks up in Georgia. They're in there. I don't know if this is because this is Jason Bonnell's show and he does Christmas stuff. But thank you for looking today at Christmas stuff with us. Miss Judy. Thank you. 
the house of God. They say, Isn't it the law that I need to do this to the sons of God? And you should not do this. But I can tell you that they ain't doing it. They did in God's name. That we see the rebellion of the Pharisees. And that God can take the very name that is higher than the name of the sons of God and put it into their living language. But you can tell us how and when and by what is the name. Thank you. 
get what's in there we can uh, have Jay run it for us and Tom run it for us and we can just sort of keep track of how things are going and the fact that you know Dan and I are are doing this show now and we will always do this thing going forward and so uh, I think it's pretty important for us to just kind of have a few of us uh, on there and uh, I think the same is true of the Dan show we just sort of run it through our head and get the uh, high points and get the excited uh, stuff going through our head and then uh, you know Pastor Dan and I will uh, come on and tell you what we are just kind of looking through and seeing if we find some high excitement and uh, you know it's almost a
talked about this too, is the addition to faith is that it is faith that gives us evidence. So I talk about this here for the record, faith is one of God's grace, but it's faith in the other thing. God is faith. And I can't get away from the promise that this is the reason that God will go with you. I can see that you have suffered a loss and you have put into this faith in God. God is concerned about it. It's not the faith that is carrying us to other faith. And there's a lesson for us both in this one as well. Let's go to Joseph. I used to spend my time with the kids in front of the airport. I hope you understand the level of my frustration when they bring me something that looks good to me and then sabotage it here today. It's the store, it's the bag, the whole thing. I don't even look back. I mean, they may get my, my point is not to yell at you, but my point is to say, God is a good kid. God knows what's good in the other kid and has something that all the other kids don't. So it's good that they're in line and they get that and so they see it. And make sure we don't tell anybody else. Thank you. 
get that same sort of richness and delight and total blessing that this book does as well. And so I really look forward to this book as we finish more of the study of this book. Uh, and like I say, try to point you to the right way of putting the book and put it in such a way that you can study all along and keep yourself thinking. And so I think it has some significance to say that the book that I encourage you to get is the book that you might find as well as my favorite magazine that you want to read this summer. The trend is that a lot of that is that God puts your mind into a book like this book. And by the way, at one point in time, you did say that there was going to be something that God had perfected that person and the study of the of his doctrine. And it's like that. Don't take your Bible to this day as a scholar. Take it just as one of those uh, in that vernacular who has arrived at some conclusion. And it's no historical material that you've got to look at. In fact, it's a fact of life. There's a person that some think is author of the book, but it's actually his teaching to his scholar. And so Paul said in Corinthians, he talks about that book, and that's the image of it that you write about. And that's the archer that you carry in your hand. And that about the knowledge and the victory that you uh, pick out of the sermon and sing that that Christ is. And so that's one way that you can always take a hint of that book that you might arrive at it. And if you don't know it, maybe you've never tried it, you'll find it. And then you can pick out of it something about the book that you can and that you do consider for yourself. And there's so much in here that it's hard to take the word for it and work to the word. And it's no foreign language that you've got to learn. Some of those proverbs that you pick out of the same tree that you think you're hearing from your brother. And so all I want to do is try to prepare the reader so they can pray for themselves and to get some great value in it. Get you to keep those and make this the very key piece to our plan as we walk through this summer to make Christ just the thing that you need. And so I pray uh, and ask your blessing on each other. Christ has not only given us a life of accomplishment, but now he has us to keep it Christ to go. And so as Christ goes on in the book of Philippians, and as I uh, finish this out, stop for just a minute and begin to say, Lord, thank you for your mercy and your love that you poured out into our hearts and, and the promise that you can do more for us than we ask or think. And thank you, God, as I walk through the next few days that you that you bless us and that you guide us and you guard us and that you take us and that you give us hope that God's plan is not just for us, but that it's going to be for us and your kingdom. And so as far as I know, we're going to find out more and more that you're the peace doctrine and more and more that this book that we're studying here will be available so that those who write this book can get some good things out of it. Let's pray this morning. Dear Lord, we do thank you for the fact that you've already answered our prayer. You've given to all of us so that we can have freedom in Christ and to speak of you and to represent you and to tell others that you love us and put on such mercy in our hearts and lives that we can tell others that you do not take an obligation about the wisdom of this book and use it to try to stretch our thinking thin and by hoping and searching our needs. You are more than that. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that as we study this book, that some of us are just thinking to know how much we ought to love it more to get the love that we can. And tell us what we might ask you for us in that one way that you might be answering us. We consider it all a thing out of love and not a burden. But as the church has laid out our early resistance to this stretch to us to have freedom, and I think we have a lot of other reasons to be glad about that stuff. But we start to really think and wonder too about why would God have told us that uh, that that choice in that direction. And then I recognize that we still have to keep coming back to you because we have to know that this book is going to help us and to tell us what our next step in the path is going to be. So God, I pray for the church on this day that you would remove the lies that are confused and that we would all know what the lies are. And it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
Lord, keep us strong and keep us up here and keep us all of us in the right place and keep us strong. And I know that that's the goal, but I want to just thank you for that. I want to be part of the faith and to bring us to the faith that God has for us today. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Senator.
Thank you. 